what I'm doing now is I'm taking a an ink drawing that I did on Duralar and I did it on the back side of actually what you see me painting right now and then I flipped it over so that the back is now facing up and I am painting a diluted layer of white watercolor ground over the surface because the Duralar does not really take to watercolors very well. I tried using trans translucent watercolor ground, but I don't like the texture of that as much as I like the white. And with it diluted like this, it was still enough to to get the uh, watercolor absorbency that I needed. I did a few tests on a smaller strip earlier where I drew on one side with the ink, flip it over, and I prepared a few different spots here. This is with uh, the white watercolor ground over here, clear over here. Uh, I layered some clear over the white and then a much di more diluted version of the white there. And I just liked how much smoother the watercolor is painted on the white watercolor ground than it does on the translucent. And I know this from working with both of these in the past, but it's just a much more evident thing when I'm working on the Duralar as the base. In the past, I've used wood, or oh, what else? What else have I done? I've uh, I've done it over other paper surfaces as well, but the the roughness of the translucent is not nearly so much in evidence as it is with this for some reason. So the light layer hopefully will be enough. And then I let this dry before I start painting on it later. So this is going to be a full painting that you're going to be able to watch in this time lapse. The entire thing. It takes me about 20 hours to do this piece. And in this time lapse, I've compressed it down to about 35 minutes for you to look over my shoulder. And most of the time this is being recorded at, well, I changed the speed at a few different places. In the early part, I believe it is a four times speed up. And later on, once I get to the leafy background and the dragon, I think I sped that up to 12 times. So just to give you a, a sense of how much this is increased in speed. But I'm going to narrate just a small portion of it for you. I'm not going to talk for the entire 35 minutes. I'm going to let you watch this in peace. And I thought about setting some music here, but I figured you probably want to set, listen to your own music. So, you know, do whatever you want. Nothing's wrong with your sound if this becomes quiet after a little while. Anyway, so I, I go through and I start painting this in a very methodical fashion. The composition here is fairly simple and direct in the way that it is a number of different succulents in a circle ringing around my dragon. And so I just am moving from one plant to the next and completing each one as I go before switching over to the background leafy area. And normally in the normal course of painting, if I have a pretty a pretty clear idea of where I'm going with something, I'll generally start with the background first and then work into my foreground elements. But in this piece, I was actually not quite certain what color I wanted to do for the background area. And so I, in, in cases like this, then I like to work from some of my foreground elements and move into the background because some of the foreground elements will have foregone you know, set colors that I need to establish in those either because that is the color of the object or the thing that I'm painting or specific lighting needs. And so once I set the tone by painting those items first, I can have a clear idea of what I'm dealing with and what colors would best complement the ones that are given. So in 
in these instances, then I work from my foreground into my background, which can be harder at times because then you have to be careful when you're working on background stuff, not to smudge and smear your background stuff, which tends to be more messy into the foreground elements. You don't want to let your, your big messy washes destroy some of the very fine details you might have spent a lot of time on in the foreground. So there's another reason for doing the background first. But as I said in this one, I was not going to do that. So it was foreground elements first and then moving on into the background. Now the other thing I want to talk about is working on this Duralar vellum. As you saw in the early portion, I prepped it first by painting that dilute layer of white watercolor ground on it. And it is white, it is an opaque watercolor ground, but I diluted it enough that it was just this very thin film. It was It's so thin that you can still see pretty much everything of the sketch from the other side of the page through it. There's just a slight dulling of the darkness of those tones. So it did not really affect my line work a whole lot by doing that. And it allows me to paint with watercolors on here and still have some of that texture, that smoothness of the Duralar. It was a very interesting texture and type of paper to work on because it was ultra smooth. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I, I use the white watercolor ground actually instead of the transparent watercolor ground, which there is, it does exist. But for some reason, the makeup of the transparent is not the same and it is a little bit more chunkier and grittier, whereas the white is very smooth even when I watered it down so much. And so it's just this thin film that I, that I painted over the Duralar and it still has this kind of silky Duralar texture to it. The advantages of this, in addition to being able to see my drawing, my line drawing through from the backside, uh, another advantage is that it lifts very easily. That could also be seen as a disadvantage <laughs> in some cases. Uh, lifting very easily can be quite problematic sometimes when you're trying to build up color and tone and really get something dark via numerous layers and building up the intensity of the watercolor. And as a result, in order to do any sort of layering and build up on this type of surface, I have to paint almost entirely the whole time with dry brush technique. I paint in an initial wash of my base tones and then from there on it's, it's painting all these layers and glazes with this tiny little size 10 slash 1 brush. <laughs> in a way it's, it's a little bit like actually uh, working with colored pencils I, I think of it except for the fact that you have to control moisture level on your brush. You, but but um, the way that I'm shading and manipulating the color is a lot like how you'd think about doing this if it was just a color pencil, except in this case with paint, you can basically customize your exact color and you never have to stop to sharpen the damn thing. Because I hate sitting there sharpening colored pencils. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, that's that's what I'm dealing with in this piece. And so then I just, you know, basically continue with this technique through all what eight, nine of these succulent rosettes and onto the dragon and the background stuff. So I'm going to let you watch the rest of the 25 minutes of this in peace. And I'll have a few closing remarks at the end as well, so you could turn up your volume again once you get there. But I hope you enjoy watching this.
the finished piece. That was about 20 hours of painting compressed into time lapse. So it's quite a bit of work to create this. <laughs> Interesting sometimes is looking at the back side when you've worked on this translucent Duralar paper because you can actually see quite a bit through it. Which means that also if you want you can paint on the back side and affect what you see on the front. As I did with the line drawing in fact. So there's the piece. Thank you for watching. You can find out more about the Succulent Dragon Kickstarter coloring book at succulentdragons.shadowscapes.com and a shout out to all the members of my Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Stephanie Law. You guys are the ones that make my continued production of these time-lapse and tutorial videos possible, so thanks so much.